Hi guys, welcome to Studio Wildlife. In this video, I'm going to show you how I painted this lion in the background. I really hope you enjoy the video. Please make sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Anyway, let's get started. So for this piece, I started by blocking in the background with black paint uh, and I just gave it a little hair dry in between to dry the layers so I could work a little bit faster. Then I wanted to block in some leaves and some branches. This was just very rough, not really focused. I actually think I might actually paint over this at the end anyway. And then it was about just building in and blocking up that ground, uh, doing it quite wet, and then just smudging that brush around to leave interesting marks, almost scraping the paint away in some areas. Next, I'm working on the face. And I start with using some purple and just blocking in the darks, because I want this to have a little bit of a cooler undertone, a bit purple. And I'm just blocking in the darker colours of the face, just studying my reference photo as close as I can. Um, this is more of a blocking stage, just to get some paint onto the canvas. I'm not really too focused on any details at this point, or getting a lightness. This, again, is just blocking that really dark colour so that I can do my finer hairs on top. For the next section, I'm just using black paint, thin down, and I'm just blocking in the big chunks of the hair. Again, for this level of work and this level of the other stage that I'm at, I'm only thinking about the big shapes of the fur. Which direction do I want to go? Where do I want the clumps? I'm not thinking about all the individual details, just drawing in those big shapes. Once I've got those shapes blocked in, I start blocking in the colours. For this, I'm just using bits of raw umber, raw sienna and burnt umber with a little bit of yellow ochre. Again, I'm not going too bright and I'm not going too saturated at this point because these are just the darks uh, that I like to establish first before bringing in the details with lighter colours on top. This is just a nice, easy way of blocking in colours without focusing too much on details. Once the blocking's done, I can start with the eyes. I start by doing a black outline and then adding some grey for the folds of skin in those eyes. And then I start by putting balls of colour. This is just a brighter version of how I ultimately want it. I just like putting the eyes in at this stage, just so I've got something to look at, so I can try and get a sense of feeling from the animal that I'm trying to paint. For the fur details, I'm working um, light on top of dark, and I am just using a number five Royal and Langnickel round brush to do this. Um, this is a, quite a big brush. I will go over the top with smaller brushes for the finer details later on. Here you can see me building up the detail of the fur with a small detailed brush. I'm just working again light on top of dark, so it's a mix of white, burnt umber and yellow ochre. And I'm just building up the tiny layers of hairs. I repeat the whole process on the other side of the eye, or the other side of the head. And as I finish this off, I like to add finer white hairs, this time quite bright because I'm going to glaze over them, and some darker hairs back over the top of the light ones, just to give that impression of lots of different layers of fur, lots of different levels or colours of hair on top. I repeat this process over the top of the eyes, glazing some extra colours and just glazing some shadows and then bringing back some finer details, and then do the whole process for the rest of the face. I'll let you watch this now. For the nose, I start with a dark wash and then gradually work from light to dark, building up those areas of light and then add some black patterns in with some Payne's Grey and some black paint. For the actual fur on the nose, that's really simple, it's really straightforward. It's just following the same steps, putting in some darker hairs first and then putting in some lighter hairs over the top in varying colours and varying tones. I'm getting lighter and lighter and lighter with each layer and then just knocking back those layers with some glazing, some shadows and some thin washes of paint to change the colours of that hair to match my reference picture more closely. So here you can see my glazing process. It's just using thin washes of paint, very watered down because I'm using acrylics and I'm just using it to change the colours, the tones and the saturation of the fur that I'm working on. Building up in layers is the best way to paint realistic fur. For the muzzle, I follow the exact same process, starting by blocking in the darker spots where the whiskers are, and then just building up in gradually lighter layers, following the direction of fur around that face, pointing slightly outwards, pointing slightly down, making it look round as possible, because that's the best thing that you can do for realism, is focus on that form as well. So you're not just focusing on details, you're looking at where the light and the shadows are, and imagining a 3D shape. 
Next, I move on to just glazing in some orange colours using a bit of burnt umber and burnt sienna. So I want to orange up the face a little bit and then I begin work on the mane. So for the long thin strands, again I'm using that five round brush and this time I'm also using a sword liner to just brush in those details of that fur. I'm leaving quite big gaps between each of the strands so that you can still see the colours underneath but just like with the rest of the fur I am working from dark to light. If you'd like to learn more about painting a lion's mane I have a full video that is just on painting a lion's mane which is up here now you can click on that if you want and then come back to this video. One of the big tips that I've learned when painting fur is to work in lots of layers and don't be afraid to paint over the layers that you've already done, especially using thin washes of paint to glaze it. Um, one of the things that I found with this one that as I glazed over some of the colours, what actually happened was I ended up washing away some of those details. Uh, well, not washing away, because washing away implies that the paint underneath was still wet. Make sure if you are doing a glazing technique that you are waiting for each layer to dry completely before you actually start applying the thin washes of colour. Glazing in this way actually led some of the fur to look softer, which gave it a more realistic and fluffier appearance, rather than having really sharp straight lines or curved lines showing those individual fur. Fur, I had lots of blended fur underneath giving it that soft fluffy look. For the next section I just used the small detailed brush to put in some more of those details and focus on really thin strands of hair. This because I'm at this stage because I've got most of it blocked in I can actually afford to focus on those really short tiny strands. I also use this time to work a little bit more on the eyes because I wasn't very happy with the eyes. I didn't think they looked very realistic. I didn't think they had much life or the life that I wanted to put in them. So I decided to remove the pupils, add a bit more brightness to them. I shrunk them down because I actually on my reference picture, my eyes were slightly smaller or my pupils were slightly smaller. So I needed to shrink mine. And at this point, I actually looked in the mirror, flipped my canvas round and saw that one of the eyes was in the wrong place slightly. So I decided to repaint those eyes. And, and that's one of the big things. Do not be afraid to paint over your work. Next up was the legs. These were a little bit trickier because I hadn't quite got them in in my initial drawing so I had to study my reference photo a little bit closer and redraw those legs in. For the legs I was focusing more on building the form rather than the details because these aren't a very big part of my image so I worked from dark to light but keeping my paint quite wet so that the colours actually blended in and smudged together. For this if you give me one second I'll tell you exactly what brush size I am using. Uh, no, I can't find it, but I think it's about a number 8 round brush Royal Langnickel and a flat square brush. Once I had the back legs done, I decided to work on the front right leg or the front right leg of the lion. It'd be a left leg on your screen. And for this, again, I was focusing on those areas of light and shadow, making sure to get the form, to give it a real 3D shape some actual structure to that pore. And again, I was keeping the paint quite thin, working from dark to light so that it blended all together. Then, just using that round brush, I was just blocking in some rough fur shapes. Again, I'm not focusing too much on the detail, but just using that fur to bring out the form and the shape of that pore. Onto the other leg now, and again, following the same principle, just drawing out the dark lines. Uh, I was using mixes of raw umber and raw sienna for this, for the darker colours. And again, I was just building it up, almost like a watercolour approach at first. Um, but as I progress through the painting, those layers dry, and so less areas blend, and you can get more opaque colours. And I like to do this working from light to dark to build up the shape and the form of this so I get lots of variation. I like being able to blend with the colours underneath when I'm focusing on form because it allows me to get lots of variation in those colours, in those tones and give it a really smooth 3D finish. Then I like to render over the top using the fur, using the soft round brushes that I've mentioned previously. And again, this is just the same way that I work with the rest of the painting, working from light to dark. Finishing up with the lion now, with this final bit of fur overlapping the legs. I kind of wish I'd done this first before I'd done the legs, but it didn't really matter because I'm used to painting over and repainting my paintings anyway, so I could get it to blend in. But for this step, I was just using raw umber and a little bit of black. 
and then switching to raw sienna to block in those basic shapes of the fur then building on top of that with my dagger brush making sure to do dark strands first because I wanted to break up some of those blocks that I'd already put in and then working over the top of it with lighter colours. Again for this all I'm really using are mixes of white, black, raw umber, raw sienna, burnt umber and Naples yellow. As I progress through this painting, I'm just building up layer on layer, lighter and lighter strands, and then I eventually glaze back over the top of that to knock them back and to make them fit with the rest of the painting. So I switched studios here, so apologies for the lighting changes, but I decided to work on the background a little bit more. I made it black at the top and added in some raw sienna and burnt umber, sort of like smoke coming out of the fire. I didn't intend for this to be a fiery painting, but that's the way it's turned out. For the grass underneath that the line was running through, I wanted to blur it out a little bit more than it already was. So to do that, I've been using an airbrush. I found this really helpful. I've just got a cheap one, small mini compressor, but it's been great for doing backgrounds and blended details. Then just using the dagger brush, I began to build up those layers over the top of it um, as quickly as I could and then airbrushed over the top again. For the final bits of detail on that grass, I just used that dagger brush to add in some loose strands of fur and some lighter areas, and that's pretty much it done, and then I splatter it with the brush just to give some dust flying off that grass. I then finished off the painting by signing it, as I always do. Um, for big pieces like this, I just use a liner brush, and I try to sign it in a way that matches the painting, so a colour that is predominant in the painting, but will still stand out. I try to make the signature a part of the painting, rather than just a signature on its own. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please make sure to give us a like and subscribe to the channel. It really means a lot. As always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. I know I'm saying it again, but please do subscribe. And for more wildlife art tips, please head over to studiowildlife.com.